Good afternoon. Welcome to the uh, Development Control and Regulatory Board. Uh, this is a public meeting and it's being held being held broadcast via the YouTube. So I remind you members to turn on their microphones when they are speaking and to turn them off when they finish speaking. Please speak into the microphone. Um, membership of the committee this afternoon, uh, Mrs. Fryer kindly is, is substituting for uh, Mr. Bannister. Uh, moving on to the agenda then, uh, item number one is the minutes. I propose that the minutes of the meeting held on the 12th of January 2023 are taken as read, confirmed and signed. Has everyone agreed with that? That looks like it'd be unanimous. Item number two, I have not received any questions from any member of the public. Item three, I have not received any questions from any member either. Item four, there are no urgent items. Item five, declaration of interest. It is noted that parish members of parish liaison Parish Town Council and District Council, all liaison committee, have a personal interest in those applications which relate to the areas covered by those authorities. Are there any further applications interest to declare at this time? Mr. Allen. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'm aware that the agent prior to mate has raised concerns about my intent on this item. I understand that this is on the basis that I've raised concerns with officers about uh, works on site undertaken by his client without uh, planning permission and for passing on uh, to officers complaints that I've received from residents. I consider that to be doing my job. Um, I'd also hope that this is a simple mistake by the agent and not a deliberate attempt to influence body or mezzo a member of this committee. I'd therefore like to seek uh, guidance from officers on this matter and will excuse myself from voting on this item if they so advise. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I assume you were talking about the Bracknell Farm application. Yeah, yeah. so um, the Localism Act does allow uh, members to make representations and act on behalf of uh, the residents of its division. Um, and it does recognise that members can still do that while at the same time um, it is desirable for them to be able to take part in board meetings. Um, and I think the key thing from the Localism Act is um, that members are allowed to be to have a predisposition to a particular view, but they're not allowed to predetermine um, the application. So they must enter it with an open mind still when they come to the board. I think that's that's the key thing to remember. Uh, Lisa, do you want to add anything to that? I think that you've, uh, you've pitched upon the point I was going to make you in that it's a review in the matter. Might you have a predisposition to a decision rather, or do you have a pre or have you reached a predetermined position? If it's the latter, then obviously it wouldn't be um, appropriate to participate. Mr Smith. Uh, thank you, Jay. Yeah, just for clarity uh, on item nine, I do actually sit as the chair of the Barden Liaison uh, Committee at uh, Colville. Okay. Any more? No. Uh, and item number six then is um, petitions. I haven't received any petitions understanding order 35. Uh, item seven, um, this is the application to uh, divert a footpath. This has been withdrawn uh, by officers uh, due to um, different parties getting together and having further discussions on on this um, proposed diversion of a footpath. So we won't be dealing with that today. Uh, moving on to item number eight then, which is Win Stanley Aggregates Limited, retrospective change of use of agricultural land at uh, Bracknell Farm, Leicester Road, Thurlaston. Uh, Katie Ferguson is going to um, present the report. Um, so over to you, Katie. Thank you. 
Thank you, Chair. This application is submitted by Wednesday Aggregates Limited for the retrospective change of use of agricultural land to Soil and Aggregates Weights Transfer Centre, sui generis, and includes associated works and engineering options at Bracknell Farm, Leicester Road, Thurlaston. Bracknell Farm lies within the open countryside and is located approximately 600 metres from the edge of Earl Shilton. The site is bound on all sides by agricultural fields. Access to Bracknell Farm is via a shared access for the farm and additional uses off a roundabout junction connecting Leicester Road and the A47. The nearest residential property outside of the wider farm site lies approximately 380 metres to the north of the site on Clickers Way. The application area for the retrospective change of use of agricultural land to Soil and Aggregates Waste Transfer Centre, sui generis and includes associated works and engineering options is shown on the slide outlined in red. The proposed development seeks to import 75,000 tonnes per annum of non-hazardous soil and aggregate waste with the inclusion of a screener, crusher and excavator to move, sort and prepare material on site. It is proposed that the stock and product piles would be kept to a maximum height of five metres. As part of the application, way bridges and a site office would be included along with works to extend the existing site access in width by approximately 7.3 metres with the inclusion of an electric gate, five car parking spaces and one cycle space. As part of the application, a transport statement was submitted proposing a net 24 two-way movements across a typical day. The application also proposes the creation of a minimum of three jobs. A noise impact assessment was submitted with the application and concluded that there would be a low impact at the on-site dwelling at all times of the day and all off-site dwellings are at a significant distance from the site and are not expected to be subject to any noticeable noise impacts from the operations. Expression of interest letters were received as part of the application from three companies in utilising Bracknell Farm as a waste transfer station. As part of the application, it is proposed that a new landscaping bund would be implemented, measuring approximately three metres in height and extending around the north, east and south of the soil processing and store area. The proposed bund would include a hedgerow, scrub and woodland mix. In addition, a landscaping bund is proposed along the access road to the west of the Weybridge and site area. A biodiversity impact assessment was also submitted, concluding the proposal would result in a biodiversity net gain. For reference, the landscaping bund has partially been implemented, extending around the north, east and south of the site. Therefore, this aspect of the application would be seeking retrospective permission. The planting on the bund has not been implemented. The Parish Council objected to the application for the following reasons. Planning policy DM4 countryside is deemed to not have been taken into consideration. There is no monitoring regime in place or proposed despite the Environment Agency's licence to operate. HDV traffic impact during peak hours on the A47 Clickers Way roundabout has not been measured by county highways and pre-application operational consents and conditions have not been stated to protect the public good. In addition, five representations have been received, one objecting, two in support and two simply stating no objections to the application. The objecting comment related to the uncertainty of the tipping material, the unauthorised development, working seven days a week, noise, flooding, the time taken for landscaping to become an effective screen and the ruining of good farmland. The comments of support related to the site avoiding any major disruption to surroundings, bringing jobs to the area and the demand for hardcore. The application site lies within the open countryside, as defined by the Baby District Local Plan. As the site sits outside the settlement boundary for Earl Shilton, policy W4, non-strategic waste facilities, and W5, locating waste facilities, are the appropriate starting point for assessing the application. Bracknell Farm, as an application site, does not fall within the urban areas of the broad locations, in or close to the main urban areas of Melton Mowbray and Market Harbour, or within major growth areas previously referred to as Sustainable Urban Extensions, or SUEs. As an application site, it is not on land with an existing authorised waste management use, on existing or planned industrial or employment land, on previously developed contaminated and or derelict land, or an existing mineral working site. The application therefore does not accord with policies W4 parts 1 to 3 and policy W5 parts 1 to 4 of the Leicestershire County Council Minerals and Waste Local Plan. The visual reference, the left-hand diagram on this slide shows the SUE for Earl Shilton as per the Earl Shilton and Barwell Area Action Plan. The right-hand diagram shows Bracknell Farm in relation to Earl Shilton's SUE. The application site at its closest is approximately 600 metres to Earl Shilton's SUE. Therefore, the application does not accord with policy W4 Part 3 as it does not sit within a major growth area. 
The latter part of the of policy four relates to new waste facilities. The application proposes a retrospective change of use of agricultural land to soil and aggregates waste transfer centre, sui generis, and includes associated works and engineering options, and therefore does not accord with policy W4 parts A to C. As shown on the slide, W policy W4 part D and the second part of policy W5 requires information to be submitted, providing a clear link between the proposed location and the waste managed, which will result in transport, operational and environmental benefits and that the applications must demonstrate the overriding need for development, which cannot be met within the urban areas. There is currently sufficient existing operational recycling capacity for construction and demolition waste to meet Leicestershire's needs within the minerals and waste local plan period. And Bracknell Farm does not have proven links as a proposed waste transfer centre to the waste managed, nor justify an overriding need for the development that cannot be met within policy compliant locations for waste facilities. As such, the development is contrary to the provisions of policy W4 and W5. The development as proposed therefore results in an unacceptable form of development in the open countryside, detrimental to the character of the locality and an unsustainable form of development contrary to policies DM1, DM2 of the Leicestershire County Council Minerals and Waste Local Plan. The following seven slides shows, shows photographs of the retrospective waste transfer station. I'll just pause a minute till it comes back on screen. There we go. Um, this slide shows photo comparisons taken towards the farm buildings at Bracknell Farm from May 2022 and August 2022. This slide shows the most recent photo taken in March 23 towards the farm buildings at Bracknell Farm. This slide shows photos taken from Earl Shilton Road towards Bracknell Farm. The next two slides show photos taken from the proposed part retrospective screening bund looking southwestwards towards El Shorten in August 2022 and March 2023. As mentioned, Bracknell Farm as an application site does not fall within the urban areas of the broad locations in or close to the main urban areas of Melton Mowbray and Market Harbour or within major growth areas, as it is clear from the slide that the application site sits outside of the defined SUE for El Shorten. The information submitted as part of the application does not provide a clear link between Bracknell Farm as the proposed location and the waste managed. There was little to no evidence as to where waste was being imported from and exported to, despite the application being retrospective. As part of the application, there has been no direct reference or substantial information which relates to the need for Bracknell Farm as a waste transfer station within the wider need for Leicestershire. There is currently sufficient existing operational recycling capacity to meet the needs within the plan period for Leicestershire. In addition, the application submitted does not provide sufficient evidence to highlight that there is an overriding need for a waste transfer station at Bracknell Farm or that this cannot be met within the policy compliant locations for waste facilities. The development as proposed therefore results in an unacceptable form of development in the open countryside, detrimental to the character of the locality and an unsustainable form of development, contrary to policies DM1, DM2, W4 and W5 of the Leicestershire Minerals and Waste Local Plan, policy CS1 and CS18 of the Blaby District Council Local Plan and policy DM2 of the Blaby District Local Plan development plan document and therefore is recommended for refusal. In addition, the development that is occurring has now persisted for over 18 months. Therefore, in addition to a refusal of the planning permission for this development, it is further recommended that the council undertakes enforcement action to cease the use, removal of waste materials, machinery and other chattels placed on the land associated with the waste transfer centre and the reinstatement to its previous condition. That is all from me. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Katie. Um, I'm, I might add that a, a site visit took place uh, on Tuesday um, there was uh, five members of the board attended. That uh, the uh, report of the site visit has been circulated. I've got a paper copy, but everyone's been emailed it anyway. Um, so they're obviously aware of it. Um, two speakers on this uh, item today. Uh, one is um, Councillor Mrs. Maggie Wright, and the second one is Ben Rayner. Olu and Lloyd, um, you both have five minutes each to speak. Um, Maggie, it's your turn to go first. If you'd like to sit over there, I'm sure you know the procedure anyway, but if you'd like to sit down and you have five minutes to speak when you start speaking. Thank you. Um. Thank you, Mr Chairman, members, for allowing me to speak today and for inviting me to attend the site visit on Tuesday. I'm very familiar with the site as it falls within my district 
um, ward and until a recent boundary change was within my divisional area. Um, Councillor Nick Chapman is actually the div divisional representative um, and sends his apologies for not being here today because ironically is on a district planning committee this afternoon. Councillor Chapman and I have visited the site together and he is supportive and agrees with my comments that I make today. Um, we are pleased this application has been brought before the committee and feel it deserves to be debated by a wider audience um, as before yourselves today. Put simply, this scheme is local and has substantial merit, but fails on policies W4 and 5 because it is on the wrong side of the road and deemed to be unacceptable location. With suitable planning permission, and so, uh, the site would be able to agree contracts and house, with house builders and developers and minimise travel for soil and aggregates across the highway network. It is within a major growth area with a large number of proposed developments already at application stage or getting ready to submit. Some of these examples are the National Rail Freight Interchange at Elmsthorpe, which is 600 hectares. Acres, sorry. The Barwell and Earl Shilton Sues land west of Stony Stanton, and that's an example of a proposed 4,500 to 5,000 houses demand on the doorstep. Even if some of these applications fail, there potentially is demand of up to 20 years on, on construction progressively. I would like to highlight the following points for the committee's consideration. The site is, on the is in the wrong location and fails policy W4 part 1 and 2 by 600 metres. But please debate why would you want to move such a site as this closer to urban areas of Hinckley and Burbage, which are the nearest ones to comply? Here, mitigation measures would have to be put into place to restrict noise and dust because of the close proximity to residential properties and urbanisation. It is also doubtful if the existing highway network would cope. As members have seen from the site visit and can see from the maps, the farm stands alone and does not require major mitigation proposals. It really is an ideal location to provide minimum disruption and does not cause any significance of harm. The site is modest in size and at only two hectares, including highway access and adapted driveway, and stands on the back of the existing farm building's footprint, where, where you saw, um, was used to be the large silage storage areas. Highways access is excellent, directly onto the A47 via a roundabout, no mitigation necessary. The closest residential properties are 300 to 500 metres away, apart from the farmhouse. It is a contained site with landscaping and bunding, a net gain diversity, and the stockpiles have a limited height of five metres. It is a non-hazardous product that is recycled and limited to 75 tonnes per annum via EA permits and controlled by bridges there are parking issue there are no parking issues and could employ three people traffic movements are limited to 24 two-way movements a day I have proposed scheme coming forward in my division that will generate which is close by between 5,000 and 15,000 movements every day they have been very limited objections one from the parish council and one other. None from major consultees. Extremely unusual considering this is a waste application. application. Blaby District Council, the local planning authority, have no issues regarding sustainability. It ticks all the boxes. Although the site is now in open countryside, there are plans for the nearby Earl Shilton and Barwell Sues. Delayed maybe, but destined to come within the next few years. A large storage battery farm on Earl Shilton Road, which will overlook the site. I believe this was part of the member's alternative viewpoint on the site visit. But logically, if you view anywhere from the vantage point of on a hill, you will always see something. Um, ironically, the proposed battery farm on that site will have its own bund and planting scheme, which I doubt we will be able to see over anyway as you drive past. So the view will be limited. The Bracknell Farm site will also be surrounded by acres of solar farms at the nearby Tooley Park and Hill Farm Thurliston, plans already submitted and being processed. We as divisional councillors ask that the committee consider approving this application or in the very least suggest that Bracknell Farm site and the application be given 
opportunity to prove sustainability. This could be achieved by granting permission for a set period of, say, five years where it could be reviewed. This would give time to gather and provide evidence for sustainability. Planning permission would also regulate and control activities. At present, it is difficult for the op operator to attract contracts and provide the requested evidence if they are not actually in production. The expressions of interest provided indicate the possibility of demand. There is an opportunity for a local farmer to diversify and be proactive in capturing future market opportunities. We accept planning decisions are in the now, but in this case feel it would be non-strategic to dismiss and ignore what is known and planned in the area. Could Mr Chairman, to... members of the committee, I thank you. Well done. <laughs> okay. Um, ben Rayner is Ben here. Would you would you like to? You need to sit in the same chair, but you can sit in a different one if you want. <laughs> You've got five minutes, Ben, and you and will time us as he did with Maggie. No. We're not to a minute. Um, Councillors, Chair, thank you for your time today. I'd like to firstly thank the case officer for all their work during this process. I wish to start by providing a brief history of the site. Bracknell Farm is a dairy farm which has sought to diversify over time. Farming and the need for diversification are clear at this and neighbouring farms, with the utilisation of space for business, increasing solar farms and forthcoming battery storage. Unfortunately, the applicant unwittingly started soil and aggregate works without the correct planning consent. The lack of planning consent was not an attempt to avoid regulation or restriction, as evidenced by the applicant applying for an environment, environment agency standard rules permit, which they subsequently received. With this permit, the applicant had wrongly believed they could operate. Following communication from the council, it was clear this was not the case. They ceased operations and set about bringing together a professional team to assist, which included planners, transport planners, architectural designers, landscape architects, noise consultants and ecologists, someone who wanted to do good for their site. The applicant has been keen to, from the start to mitigate the impact of the use. And this is clear from the circa 30% biodiversity net gain, tree planting and delivery of the scheme as close to the existing built form as possible. The proposal is wholly sustainable form of development, recycling natural resources for development. The committee report identifies that the application site does not benefit from formal contracts. However, they cannot enter contracts before achieving planning consent. They do have formal expressions that have supported this application and identify the benefits of the location. In addition, interest from house builders is clear, but again, until formal consent, contracts cannot be made. The application has not received objections from Blaby District Council, the environment, environmental health team there, the Environment Agency, Highways Authority, LCC's ecology and landscape teams. And Ferliston Parish Council did not comment. Blaby commented that the scheme did not have sustainability issues and that being away from residential properties and operating under the EA permit should control the impact. While located within Blaby District it is adjacent to Hinckley and Bosworth, where growth around Elshawton includes the SUE to the southeast of the town and further growth around the town. The local area around the site is set to undergo transformational change with solar farms and battery storage, residential and commercial development. All on the other side of the road as well. Further growth in local settlements identified in this and future local planning policy, uh, local plan periods. Policy W4 referenced in the committee report and today allows for new waste facilities within major growth areas. However, Bracknell falls short on this location as being as, ex as acceptable in planning terms. Had it been on the other side of the road, this would have been accepted and not a committee today. I request that logic overrules a policy that restricts suitable development. In this instance, the location of a soil and aggregate use in a residential area would be inappropriate. In addition, unlike a paper recycling facility, a soil and aggregate use would not be appropriate in a commercial area, where screening and crushing and piles are present with a need for land. This development proposal will not impact the growth potential of El Shilton, but be close enough to manage soil and aggregates off development sites, clean and screen, and then return a natural resource to the local area. Bracknell Farm's entrance onto the roundabout is actually within throwing distance of that settlement boundary and would consider an 
an acceptable location for this use had it been on the other side of the road. I reiterate, if it had been, it wouldn't have been at committee today. The proposal delivers a sustainable use for an agricultural farm undergoing diversification. The site is located within a highly sustainable location, close to existing highway infrastructure and away from areas of residential um, properties. There's employment growth local to this that's in the local plans and future planning applications. As evidence in the consultee responses, there are no overriding issues that cannot be mitigated by the proposal and no reasons from a technical point that this should lead to the proposal being refused. The proposal will deliver direct and indirect employment opportunities, minimise the opportunity for travel distance and provide significant biodiversity net gain. The applicant is committed to delivering landscape and environmental improvements at the site. And as your officer notes, the site is outside the assessment of L. Shilton. However, this proposal is close enough to be perfectly positioned for the use and to provide a sustainable option for development. Therefore, I request that you dismiss your officer's recommendation and approve this planning application today. Thank you for your time. What you said this afternoon, OK? Any members? Michael. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, you mentioned um, there are several companies waiting to have contracts with you, and the officer mentioned in her introduction um, about imports and exports information not being provided. Why was that? Ticketing information was provided about the imports and exports for the period up to September. Um, obviously, once an agreement goes into place, then greater contracts can be agreed, which would actually show the direction of a lot of this transport movements. So it is a case that we expect that Bracknell Farm would actually serve a lot of El Shilton and local area for development and would be restricted by the EA permit for 75,000 tonnes. So, yeah. Just to come back, Chair, yeah. is ticket inf information the same as the information that officers required? Well, we, we were requested information. We could provide ticketing information because they ceased operations afterwards. But we obviously, until you have the agreements in place, knowing what site and where to it's going um, is more challenging. So we do need that planning permission to do that. If the officer can expand on that. Yeah, that's fine. So in um, August 2022, we asked for ticketing information, obviously, because the application is retrospective. It's the materials coming to and from. We received one screenshot of a single ticket um, in its paragraph um, in here. I think it's paragraph 78, um, where um, the distance of it from the ticket was 47 miles away and it was about an hour in the car. I then went back in October 2022 and asked for further ticket information, which came informally as part of a spreadsheet so it was numbers stats figures so it wasn't physical evidence of tickets of the information and like ben said it only came up until it was july 2021 until september 2021 when actually the application form states that development didn't start until september 21 so we only had a three month period technically prior to the application commenced okay. anyone else questions no looks like you're free to go then ben Thank you very much indeed, Chair. Um, so I'd just like to start off by thanking the officers for their detailed and balanced report, and also to the members who attended the site on Tuesday. Uh, Councillor Flyer, I hope you've managed to salvage your shoes. It was a bit on the poggy side, it has to be said. Um, I'd also like to start by saying that I'm completely supportive of the principle of what the applicant's trying to do, and it's to be welcomed. My concerns lie with where the works are proposed, and how they've approached the whole process, which has essentially consists of being dragged screaming and kicking the whole way. This is a basic planning principle that any application be decided on its own merits and not in relation to any other developments. If you start making um, exceptions to policy, chaos ensues. I mean, just look how well that's worked for Hinkley and Bosworth. Um, the facts are that here and now, this application is not compliant with currently adopted policies of this council, as has been detailed in the report and as outlined by the officers. 
but therefore ask members to support the officers' recommendations A and B. Thank you, Chair. Anyone else like to speak? Yeah. Yeah, you're second then, then, Michael. That just leaves us to have a vote then, in that case, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's been proposed and, and seconded that um, the application be refused, which is the, the recommendation is on page 99 of the officer's report. All in favour of that? We recommend refusal. Give. And. Yes. Um, also been been requested to. Can we uh, include? Make sure that it does include the enforcement action that's that's also in the recommendation. So that's okay. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. Seven in favour. How many against? Any against? Abstentions? No abstentions. No All right. <laughs> Sorry, what? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. So it's re recommended. Um, it's refused. Then the application is refused. Thank you very much. Moving on then to uh, item number nine. Um, that's it, on. Let's see it. Item number nine is uh, aggregate industries application variation of conditions at uh, Barden Quarry, Barden Roadwood, Colville. It's going to say Woodville. Uh, and this is being presented by Nick Nick Bowden. Nick, are you ready to fire off? Open chair, if I could just wait until we set up. Okay, good to go. Okay. Site comprises the long established Barden Quarry, and the applications seek to vary conditions for 17, 63, and 64 of the current overarching planning permission for the site originally granted in 2011. This application is reported to the committee due to the requirement for an amendment to the existing Section 106 agreement for the site, which includes highway works, rights of way and biodiversity. The complex comprises two large quarry voids, one under undergoing backfilling operations, the Western void, and one actively being extracted together in an extensive mineral processing area accessed from the A511, which is the Eastern void. Internal hall roads and conveyor systems connect different parts of the site, which are intersected by restored landforms, areas of woodland and agricultural land and buildings. Planning permission is sought for vari variations to a number of conditions to the existing planning permission. In summary, these comprise the reprofiling parts of the site, details of an interim restoration scheme and relocation of overburdened storage. This is largely to facilitate current operational requirements of the site connected with soil movements, restoration of the former quarry void and facilitate extraction of the active quarry void. A principal reason for this application is due to difficulties occurring between transport of the overburden from the active quarry to the completed quarry void to the northwest using the current conveyor system. The system is struggling with the type of material to be transported and an alternative destination for overburden material is required whilst operational efficiencies and use of the conveyor are worked out. The main outcome of the scheme is the relocation of half a million cubic metres of material to the northern landform. 
The extent of the eastern quarry void can be seen here with the position of the northern landform shaded. Due to the surrounding levels and the distance to site boundaries, the repositioning of the material will not be visible outside the application site. This slide shows the differences in levels between the existing landform and as is proposed. With the section shown here, the green dots being proposed and I think red being existing. The existing landform has recently been planted out with a number of relatively immature tree specimens. The enlargement of the northern landform would result in the loss of some of these trees in the short term, although those suitable for replanting will be transferred to tip 18 to the west. An additional 500,000 tonnes, sorry, cubic metres of material will be deposited on the west southwest inside slope to the northern landform, as can be seen in this photo and also in this one. The overarching restoration scheme is shown here. The application is recommended for approval subject to the completion of a deed of variation to carry over the requirements of the preceding planning obligations for the site. Thank you, Joe. Yes, I haven't received any comments from Mr Gillard. Sorry, sorry about that. The recommendation on uh, page 110, um, but it's really open to members now. Um, anybody like to say anything, move anything, ask anything? Or... Mr Grimley? So, Getting as bad as I'd like to um, propose officer's recommendation on this for approval. Seconded by Dan. Right. Um, done. Anybody else wish to speak? Looks like no. We move to the vote then, in that case. All in favour that we permit this application. I think that's unanimous. Is there anyone against the application? No. That application is passed then. Move on to um, item number 10 then. It's delegated, delegated decisions. Oh, dear, dear, dear. OK, we better start at number 10 again. Delegated decisions. Issue the fit. Has it gone again? Don't be fine. Oh, the running light keeps going out. <laughs> oh, dear. Delegated decisions issued on the 1st of January 23 to the 31st of March 23. This report is, is to note... Are there any questions on those delegated decisions? No. Item number 11, as I've stated earlier, there are no urgent items. Item 12, Chairman's announcements. The next meeting is scheduled for the 11th of May 2023 at 2 p.m. And with that, I'll say thank you very much. Thank you for coming and we'll close the meeting. <laughs>